right, everyone, welcome to the advent of code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc and edited video where I'm back on the pattern of easy mistakes taking 15 minutes to figure out, which is kind of nicer than just me being angry at the problem because I don't like how the problem is being structured and worded. And uh, yeah, so day 18 um, is now back on the planet, which means no encode today. Um, as you approach Neptune, a planetary security system detects and activate giant tractor beam on Triton. Why? Okay, this kind of local area reveals only one interesting feature, a massive underground vault. You generate a map of the tunnels, your puzzle input. The tunnels are too narrow to move diagonally, so that's at least easier. Only one entrance marked at is present among the open passages marked with a dot. And stone walls marked with a pound sign would also detect the smart assortment of keys shows, uh, shown as lowercase letter and doors shown as uppercase letters. Keys of a given letter open the door of the same letter. A opens capital A, B opens capital B, and so on. You're unsure which key you need to disable the tractor beam, so you'll need to collect all of them. Okay, suppose I have the following map. I'm starting here. Starting from here, you can only access the large door A and the key A. Moving towards the door doesn't help you, but you can move two steps to collect the key, unlocking A in the process. Okay, then you can move six steps to collect the only other key, B. Oh, at is where I am. It's not just the entry point, it's my current cursor. So collecting every key took a total of eight steps. All right, here is a larger example. Oh God, okay, so boom, that way. Then you can get that one, then you can get that one, then you can get that one, you can get that one. The only reasonable move is to take the key and unlock A. Then do the same key with B, and the same with C, blah, blah, blah. Now, here I am, oh, where? Well, here I am. Now you have a choice between keys D and E. Yep. While E is closer. Yep. Uh, collecting it now would be slower in the long run than collecting the key first. So that's the best choice. So I go there. Finally calling. Oh, God. Okay. So this is, I, I was about to say this is some kind of traveling salesman problem. But not exactly. Because you have to make a kind of analysis of uh, the distance between all the points and knowing the cost. Or you can just do uh, what we've been doing lately, which is a recursive search. And taking all the options and keeping the shortest one, um, which is likely what is going to be the most straightforward to do. Uh, the problem is going to have an idea about where all the keys are and all the paths are and not just walking randomly through everything, I guess. Uh, here are some more examples. Shortest path is 132 steps, so they give us nice little examples. Ooh, a little map that's not just in the same shape. Oh, that's going to be a lot more trouble to get, I guess. There's, yeah. That will be an interesting thing about how we represent that thing, because just representing it as... Um, Just representing it as maps is going to be annoying to navigate. Uh, you can't easily uh, make it work as a graph, and it's kind of a having. Hmm. That's going to be interesting. I don't know how I'm going to structure this. This one is going to be. Yeah, uh, you need to go get all the small keys there at once, I guess. There's a, an element of pathfinding is that where I'm guessing that you would really want to get as many keys as you want. Mm, not necessarily. What's my puzzle input? Oh, God damn it. Okay, that's not going to be a fun one. It's a quite a large freaking map. And Okay, I'm going to have to think hard about how I want to represent this freaking thing. Because I can't just use points. 
points in a map are not going to be effective. There's an element of it that's a kind of maze. There are way too many branches to just brute force the freaking thing. Um, let me... I hate having the little period here. That way I understand why they're doing it that way, but I just don't want to see it. No, that's not... Yeah, that's a bit easier to read, is it? I don't know if it's easier to read. Yeah, I don't want to play with the input that way. So, and where I'm at, I'm right in the middle. So, whoa, okay. Because here's the thing, each search I'm going to do is going to move me from point to point. And knowing, like, it's not just about knowing which one I have. If I want to make it to this point, um, at least if I don't have diagonals, I don't have to care about where I'm going from the top or the left. It's a kind of Manhattan distance again. But navigating the distance in number of periods between these two, because I know I want to go there. It's the kind of stuff where you would usually use a kind of pathfinding algorithm, I guess. Uh, which the big known one, how to be. Uh, yeah, I don't want this one. Like the big one would usually be something like a star algorithm, but those are not necessarily cheap to run uh, in a functional pattern in there. And so. Well, there's backtracking, but there's a lot of backtracking to do. It's for graphs as well, which is an interesting thing. Like, how would I represent this thing as a graph? I guess technically I could decide that each point is a node that points to other ones in that kind of sequence. And the walls are just not connected. And that would probably work. Um, do I have here? Uh, whoop. Where's my digraph module in here? Direct to graphs. Digraph module. Uh, I'll very soon bet get short path. It would be easy to get a bunch of short path from the node I'm at to a different node and mutate the graph as I'm in it and pick stuff in there. Um, based on labels and everything, I could probably get lists of keys and all their positions and then the vertices they're in. Um, reachable neighbors, ronging, strong component, top sort, subgraph. I don't have anything that gives me uh, an easy search otherwise. So that might be very, very um, tricky. And the other thing is that uh, what I'm thinking about is that even if I know the shortest path, for example, from wherever I was, which I no longer hear, uh, you know, there's F and there's X, and I only know how easy they're going to do once I know which doors I have um, and in what order. So the thing that I might have to do and I probably won't have time to do it this morning because I just finished day 17. Uh, oh, wait, and this is part one, right? <laughs> God damn, there's a bigger part coming after that. How many steps to collect all of the keys? Uh, man. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm hoping it's not some other magic shit that if you look at the map the right way, you can find that there is a secret wall you can go through and just unlock all the doors or something like that. Um, what well, if I had to build it, it would probably be to, you know, make a map with X, Y chords of all points and keys to turn the map into a graph for all connected points. And that should be extremely freaking expensive. Um, because not only would I have to do it one way and the other, uh, and I cannot do easy backtracking or that simple backtracking. But yeah, 
uh, from the list of keys and oh and I need to block the keys that have doors in front of them so that doesn't work um, because the idea of okay yeah uh, from the list of keys that would be a thing a uh, grab all the shortest path from current position B filter out shortest that go through doors um, that's not gonna w because then I need to have the second shortest path it's possible that I get maybe maybe the input does not let me do that but it's possible that just getting the shortest path won't be enough because for example where where's one door yeah D here it's possible I could uh, you know reach Y by going through D here and that might be the shortest path but there might be a longer path somewhere where um, you know I go down through another thing in these um, also do I need to gather all the keys or unlock all the doors because those are not the same thing right Yeah, I only need to gather the keys. I don't need to open all the doors. That's a different thing. So in the first question, I don't need to open. Uh, I'm guessing, well, do all the doors have a key assigned? To, yeah, there's going to be a last key and a last door. Which is, oh, that's what they do here. They just give you a key that's smaller than all the doors. And the order in alphabetical order does not worry. God, okay. Um, okay, so it, it could work to work with the shortest path. Um, and then, you know, uh, prioritize the others. And then D would be recurse and then four filter out the shortest sequence uh, but this caveat only works if there is one path to each key and I don't know that this is the fact and this is what is very very frustrating me and if I make this assumption and go down that path and I'm right it's going to pay back handsomely because it's going to be easy but if it's wrong I'm going to spend you know, a very, very long time not doing, uh, working on the wrong thing because of these assumptions. Uh, all the examples that they're giving me, though, work on that kind of idea that each key is behind a door and there is no way around them. Like, there's no way to cycle that. Maybe they, they, they specify it, but... Sorry, my keys. Open the door, same letter, yeah. That's fine only access yeah they're not giving me explicitly that constraint on the problem uh, all right so I'm going to have to think about if there is any other way to do it than this nice little sequence that would probably be costly but doable and I don't know if day two is going part two is going to need anything looking like that so I'll think about it go to work and work on this a bit later today all right, so um, I've been thinking a bit, and now that it's about lunchtime, I've got a bit of time to work on that. So um, I'm going to build a map, um, and I'm going to do something that essentially ignores the walls and just gives me a big path like this, uh, with all the keys and all the stuff in there. And uh, in building the map, I will try to gather all the keys and all the doors and all of that stuff in the current position. Uh, and I'm not going to use graphs or anything. I'm going to use breadth first uh, search BFS from now on, which is going to look for all the path uh, closest to my current position and expand slowly around that. And um, in doing so, um, I think I will do it for each key individually. Uh, the other option is to just do a breadth first search in general and return all the values 
uh, and, and just do a kind of uh, map flooding where all the points slowly get forwards and forwards and whatnot, and I'm just gathering all the information from the position I'm in. That would imply that um, I can stop when I've seen all the keys or all the doors, which is shorter than going through the entire map, but I, I could assume that it's equivalent to filling the entire map on every iteration, no matter what I do. Um, there are going to be ways to probably, yeah, uh, stop on closed doors, uh, visit other things. And uh, doing a BFS is done usually by taking all the elements you see around yourself, putting them in a queue, and visiting them in the order that they have been in queues. So uh, to be able to make each search individually without tracking other stuff, I'll probably need to uh, enqueue the next element and those that have been seen in the current path to be able, or at least account of those uh, that have been in there so that I don't backtrack and visit the same thing multiple times. Um, I think that it would be more optimal if I use a scene element that is shared between all the um, explorations, but I'll probably figure that one out as I descend into the entire thing. Um, and yeah, accidentally fill other carry a path through it. That was something if I were doing um, one search per key so that each search can stop early. Uh, and in doing so, then I would uh, probably have to solve with all the other ones. So, but uh, I can probably instead do, uh, or just do one big flood fill for all keys and doors, and then that would work. Um, yeah, and the other thing is that I will have this uh, biggest map that I'm going to represent in memory. And my objective in order to make this workable and hopefully somewhat fast enough is to never update that map. This is going to be a read-only map. I'm going to carry all the information around the position of the keys and the paths and everything into a side map on the side of something so that the big one uh, does not need mutating all the time. Uh, but for this one, I think it will be reasonable to start with an example function using some of the inputs that we have. Uh, not here, but in this right here, and I'm going to start with the simple ones. Uh, no shame is that. And so, example um, input is just going to be here, and this is going to be a line break. Okay. Uh, to map input and here I would expect to see uh, yeah a map I would have to have the keys and the doors and the current position are the things I want to have and I'm going to start with just that so to map of a big string uh, I'll probably need to I can parse it in one go. I don't need to uh, break it up in rows and everything. The line break is going to be the code for that. So to map, and I'm going to start at position zero, zero at the top left and go down uh, with directions that map with the, yeah, the overall idea that they're all going to be relative positions, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I have the string and here I'm going to carry um, the empty map, I'm going to carry uh, a list of keys, actually I'm going to carry a map of keys and they're going to be indexed by position as well, same for the doors and the position is going to be um, undefined for now, I don't care what it is, okay. Um, so when I'm done, meaning that um, this is the end of it. I have this string that is empty. And I have map, keys, doors, and position. I will return all of that. Map, keys, doors, and position. And the rest of it is going to be x, y of... I'm going to cover the line breaks right away. Not caring about these. Um, Map key, doors, and position. That's just going to be x, y plus one. That's going to be zero. Y plus one and loop. T map keys, 
doors position. Then uh, I will care for a character in the list map. Keys, doors, and position when the character is greater than or equal to A, and also the character is uh, to Z, which means that now I have to map X plus one Y. And here it's going to be uh, X Y. It's going to be the character itself. In my keys, I'm going to also have X Y and the character. The doors will remain the same, and the positions remain the same. I'll copy that logic, and now I'll do it with the um, doors instead. And so. For this, I'm going to have the keys remain the same. I'm just going to grab this. Doors are going to be that way. Then to map X, Y, and uh, I think that's the position of my tunnel entrance, and therefore my first thing. And so for that one, it will simply be to map X plus one as well, Y. Um, you know, I'm just going to, no need to have a, uh, not a special one, it's going to be a point. So that's fine. Ah, uh, keys, doors, and the position is now X and Y tracked. And the last one I want to carry are going to be the uh, full stops. You know, uh, I'll call it uh, it's going to be do they have a name for that now? They only just have the entrance and this is going to be a corridor I think, right? This is passages and I'll just mark it as open. I'm in there but that's fine. I'm going to track it independently. Um, Two map keys, doors, position. That's not changing. That's going to be two map. X plus one. Y map. This is very similar to the previous clause, but I don't change the position. And the final one of them is ignoring all the stuff I don't care about. So probably a wall. Oh, for all of these here, I forgot to carry my next time of iteration. Otherwise, I'm not going into anything. Map keys, doors, position. And for this, it's just two map x plus one y. D map keys, doors, position. Very repetitive, but should work. Position isn't used. I don't give a crap. Position isn't used indeed. I'm going to just kill it there. Your bar three shell, day 18 uh, example. Boom, okay. Um, I'm going to. Yeah, I'll keep it the same, that's fine. It's just annoying because I don't have the uh, easy metal way of dealing with the keys and the, the name. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, fix this and go, oh, no, I don't. That would be uh, list to a tom of this. And, and then it gets to be a big ass bit of content that I need to split on multiple lines. Yeah, screw this, that's going to be good enough. I'm just going to align it as I feel. Uh, and so here I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Oh, it needs to be 
put in a list so that it's perceived as a string again. And uh, therefore, this is going to be fine. The doors is going to be the list too. And uh, I'm just going to work with the symbol like representation because I find it easier to reason about that way. So, nope, not day 17. That was fast though. Um, all right, B, A, B, and uh. Okay, there's an A key, there's an A door, and there's nothing else in between. Okay. And my starting position is 5-1, which is open. Uh, that's good. Okay. So, I've got my map. I've got my input. Um, so, I'm now due to do my brand first search already. Which, who knows how I'm going to do that. Uh, all right. Let's start with... Just a freaking search with the keys and the doors, and I'm going to use the position as the first argument because it makes it a bit easier to walk around. Uh, and I will know that because this makes for an easy check to do, but I know that uh, I, I will know that I'm done when. I will need to first carry my state map keys doors and that will start a recursive search map key doors uh you know an exploration point which is going to be first uh the set of scene values that I said I wanted to have which I'm going to carry in as a map and I will start on the initial position. That's what I enqueue at first. Ooh. Now I'm in my search. And my search will be complete in one of two ways. I'm guessing when the map is done, but when my keys map here, and the doors and the queue, uh, I don't care about the queue at that point when uh, there's a guard function for map map size. Yep. And map size is equal to oh, of keys is equal to zero. I'm just going to drop all those that I found. I think uh, for them to be removed, and it's going to simplify a few things then I know I'm done and so the thing I should return is oh so when I'm done the thing <laughs> I need a new thing which is going to um, it would usually be the current path which I would store there uh, so I cannot end my run in this case. I can only end my run once I have detected that I'm on a key and I know that this key is the last one. So let's go with the queue then. Oh, in the queue. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, Erlang queue module from list is going to be what I use just because it's going to be that much more uh, easier to make effective. from list and clearly I had swapped a few things in here. All right. So case Q, I think it's Q next. Where's my Q module in here? Q or it's pop or it's next or it's peak, it's new. Uh, peak, let new member drop cons get. Is that get? No, it's out. Out is the function I get out of the queue, I think. Let's see. Returns an item at the front, fails the written. Yeah, okay. That, that works for me. If I'm ever searching into uh, getting nothing, uh, I won't do this. I will use, I think out is the function I want. Oh, 
backwards out. Yeah, that's the one that gives me also if the queue is empty or something. So Q next of the Q of, I think there it's value, uh, and that will be seen and, oh yeah, I don't need to actually track my position explicitly in these. Um, no, I need it in the first argument, I don't need it in the second. Uh, but if I don't need it in a second, now I will have a name clash, which sucks. But, um, okay. To make a private search function, I'm sure I will find arguments to add at a later point. Uh, scene position of. All right. The other thing I, I was thinking of carrying is the. Uh, yeah, I'll think I'll do that. I won't need to rename the function. And I will have uh, a global scene value instead of that one. I still will carry this one here, uh, which will be useful to know the size of a given path. And maybe I will just have, uh, you know, uh, path scene or something. And this one is going to have a full scene that is shared by all the instances. And the reason for that is that um, if I'm getting into, uh, where's my biggest map? It's in here. Um, you know, if I'm having this point A here and that I'm starting to visit this, but my breadth for search also had me try this one or something already, I don't want to go and retry the same path multiple times because the same keys, for example, are one after the other. So if I had, uh, do I have this anywhere in there? Probably. Um, but yeah, if they they share the same subpath, I don't want to enqueue it multiple times. Well, I will probably enqueue it multiple times, but I will filter them early on uh, with this. So if I have that, then I will have the new queue, and I will make sure that this is a thing value item. Yep. Uh, then I can do the search. This is the position I'm searching from now, right now. So I will get all the, um, I will need to first check what I have at this position in the map. So, okay, is maps get position of the map. And uh, invalid of, if it's invalid, then I'm done searching that path already. Uh, which means I will search on the position here no longer exists. I no longer need that. I will search on the map, on the keys, on the doors. I will add, and I'm going to use uh, a map for scene here. Yeah, I haven't said it, but it's going to be a map because easier access for this scene. Uh, position true. And I will look into the new queue. That's my search. If what I get in there is, uh, damn it. Uh, yeah, okay. If it's open, that's fine. I was just thinking that my items don't make it easy to search or something, but um, there's another way to do it. If the space is open, then uh, the thing I will do is similar to this, but the new queue will not be this exactly. I've seen the current position. Now I need to find uh, find neighbors, and I'm going to pass to find neighbors the current position, the map, and what I have seen so far, and it will return to me uh, all the valid neighbors. It will be this. Oops. Where am I? Wait, wait, wait. I had some little editor problems. So the thing I will want to do then is for each neighbor I have, I will. So uh, next queue is going to enqueue neighbors. 
I will use consistent spelling in there. And um, the path scene with the new queue. And that's going to give me the next queue. And then I'm just going to pass the next queue in there. The scene point is that one. Each one of them will have the value. And if there is nothing to enqueue, there's nothing to enqueue. And then uh, next one. Oh, god damn it! Okay. Oh. So now I will have what is usually an atom. And uh, when. That will be a door key. So, uh, to sorry, to store that one, the thing I will I will be able to say is uh, yeah. and this is going to be uh. I am going to be able to. Yeah, OK. So first I want to figure out if it's a door. Because if it is a door, and so door or key is in there, and uh, I think I stored their position, but I know it's a key in there, then this path is over. Uh, I can no longer search on this one. So it's the same as being invalid. Meaning I will go this way and I will search and map the doors to see the position is set to true. The door remains in the list. That's fine. Um, if similarly or otherwise it's not there, then that means that it has to be a key in that one. So when I get a key, um, I will keep searching the way I was already doing it with these, I think, because there could be other keys further down the path. I'm going to flood the whole freaking map. Um, the thing is that I can uh, maps. No, I will store in the keys for the value that I have. Um, and I'm getting to be on very long lines here. That's not a big deal. I'll, I'll reformat at some point. I'll, I will see if it works first. So I will search in the maps in the keys, but the key uh, in that position will be door or key. And I will update it to say found. All right. I will need to do that with the doors as well. Because if I have seen the key for a door oh, and the matching one, uh, I can do that. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I'm going to do. So if it's a position, then it's invalid. Um, I'm going, that's going to be an invalid one, but I'm going to also have here a thing for door or key and it is unlocked. And if it is unlocked, then I can keep searching, but I need to re-enqueue all the crap I had already. This is going, okay. I will probably need to, uh, do some cleanup of this because I'm getting a lot of duplicated logic in terms of what is valid or not. Yeah, so expansion is going to be extracted. I'm going to finish that one anyway, just to make sure that I'm getting it fine. And here I need to uh, unlock from the doors with, uh, I'm going to use door key here. And I know it's a key technically at that point, but that's fine. And I'm going to pass that through. So now I've got the door, I got the key. 
I've got the atom, the whole thing is broken. That is complete for this entire branch of when I have an item to see. The other interesting thing will be when I get instead empty and, uh, and uh, an empty queue. And that means I'm kind of done searching at that point. Um, so that's cool and good. I have flooded the map. And that means that I can return uh, keys, doors, scene, I guess. Here I, I won't even start with found. The thing I will have is maps size of um, the amount of item I see in my position. I think that was the name of the thing, right? Pat scene. I'm actually going to store the entire thing. I don't care. And let's call it a day. So here, right, that's the end of the door. I end this one. I end. I think that's it. It no longer fits my monitor because of the zoom I've put, but yeah. Plenty of things I haven't completed, but find neighbors, NQ neighbors, and unlock. Uh, find neighbors. I have an X, Y position. I have a map and I have a bunch of scene elements. And those are going to be uh, rather easy. It's going to just be, um, those are scene one. I don't care for the path scenes one yet, just the position. So it's going to be pause, or pause in. X plus one Y, X minus one Y, uh, X Y plus one, Y minus one. Uh, and I'm just going to guard them with um, maps get. Uh, the position in the map false. Uh, whoa. Uh, it's not equal to undefined. I don't care. I just don't want it to. I want it to find actual things in the map. And this hinges on the fact that I'm dropping in creating my map. All these walls are not going to be part of the map. Um, so I can ignore them. Although it might make sense to maybe have it typed properly as a wall. And if part two asks me to do something, I can do that. Uh, if it's not in a wall and also uh, maps get position in scene elements. And in scene element is I'm just storing them as true. So I am going to return false. And um, that should be, oh yeah, if they are not seen. So those should be my neighbors. Then I can NQ the neighbors and those are going to be just a bunch of positions. So just a bunch of points. Uh, path scene is going to be a map with a kind of prefix and a Q. So if I have none of them to do, I don't care for the path scenes and I'm just returning the Q. If I have one of them in the points, I have a uh, path scene, I have Q. Uh, the function for enqueuing should be in, I guess. No, yeah, in. And it just returns a queue and I just put the item first. 
So Q in and I store them to have uh, pat. I'm just going to make a smaller scene set just to avoid bleeding of the screen. Scene uh, H is set to true. Is that what I have in the path scene one? Yes. Uh, that's the only place I update it. It's never used otherwise. Okay. That's going to be fine. And then I'm putting H in there and Q. And that's why I return. Oh, crap. I need to recurse, of course. So, uh, neighbors of T. Scene is going to be the same. I'm just going to repeat it that way. And that's the recursive function. Now I have what's left to cover. Unlock. Unlock will require us to cheat a bit because all I have is an atom of a of a key, so that will be a lowercase atom. And I will need to do an atom to lists of lowercase. Um, and what's the thing, right? So a minus the lower case, the uppercase ones are lower in the ASCII ladder than the rest. And so if I do this, no, oh, that's a space. What was the thing? To lowercase a thing. It was, uh, so dar in oh yeah okay minus 32 that's going to be that's the thing right so yep okay um, list and that's going to give me a single character lowercase and the thing I will do then is uh, List to add them of C minus 32, and that uh, will turn it to uppercase, which will be a door name. I hate doing all these conversions, but there are few keys. Uh, I think it's easier to read that way. And um, the fact that there are few keys and I'm operating on a restricted set tells me that it's going to be cheaper than just doing the overall search for everything. So. Unlocking will be, what did I expect to see for a door to be locked? Unlocked, I just write it as unlocked. Okay. So uh, doors, door, unlocked as an update. And here we go. Uh, so that should give me one phase, I guess, from the undefined Q next oh yeah it's not next it's out I even looked it up bad key a on line 58 what So NQ neighbor does a call to that doesn't make sense. Why am I getting a bad key error on this? It's not even uh, damn it. That shouldn't be here because the key is not going to be a problem. Oh, wait. Oh. It's possible that uh, the door does not exist in the map because that's what I have here, right? Uh, when I gather the B key, there's no matching B door. Um, so, but I'm getting a bad key on A. Anyway, let's see what this gives us. Yeah, still the problem. Where am I? A should be in the keys I have seen already 
Is this the one where it fails? If that's it, then I have a little problem. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. I've swapped my keys and everything to be positions instead of what I had in there. Um, because I expected that I would be building a kind of search, I guess, based on the positions. So when I build my keys, it's going to be instead, uh, that's an open space. And here it's going to be the position for some reason, I guess. No, no, no. The first one has to remain the same. It's that one that I'm flipping. X and Y. And here that's going to be the same. Just because I need a value. I probably could just have put them in any list whatsoever. Uh, and so here I should be able to get back to this mechanism. So A was done in two steps, B was done in one, two, three, four steps. That doesn't seem right. I, I, I haven't told it to do backtracking. <laughs> That's not right. Oh. oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm updating them. Yeah, I need to do it per key for that reason. Damn it. I cannot do a global crossing for all of the things. I need to do a per key search because otherwise I'm finding A and it's instantly unlocking the door A and B is instantly available but from the position I'm at and that's not what I want. So I cannot unlock any doors as part of that mechanism. Uh, so that one is all right. That door kills it but I am not unlocking any doors yet. I'm going to keep them the same and see what that gives me. And so there, okay, now it kind of makes sense. I'm only finding the key A. That's the only one I'm able to find. Oh no, I'm, yeah, B is only a position. I'm only able to find the key A um, and I've got this done. So this is round one of a search and it's finding me the first key I can have. So I'm going to instead call this one search key and I'm going to let's be nice. There we go. And I'm probably breaking a few a few of these, but that's not bad. Anyway, I don't care. So this should work, okay. And here, what I will be getting then is uh, the step for the first key. And what I'm getting out of this is, okay. I'm going to clean that one up for now because it's already getting unwieldy. Um, I'm going to just allow next of pose map scene. That's super long. I don't like it. New queue. The only thing I'm saving is neighbors for that. Uh, but that should be the next queue. And this one, I'm just going to extract this here. Oops. 
this is going to be uh, delete until this this one is going to be down here okay No backtracking, no cycles. Next is going to be fine. So at least I'm going to simplify that one. Same here. Same here. This one I can probably join it to a single line. It's just large and annoying. Um, the new queue, that means I expand, no search, that's a dead end, that's fine. Yeah, there's not a lot of it, there's not a lot I can save in there, all things considered. Uh, door key, it's just a bit simpler. If it's open, it's that. Yeah. And because the business rules vary slightly in each one of them, that's as good as it gets. Okay. I'm just going to break my lines down to be a bit shorter that way. So search key here, since it's a Definitely independent function. <sighs> Trying to keep it clean. And I had an empty map and I had this. And bits is my thing. And search key is returning me um, keys, doors, and scenes. Okay. Nope, not this one. Here. Okay, uh, new keys is going to be this. So uh, this is where I'm going to pick all the keys that have been valid. So. Uh, The found keys are going to be this. So that's going to be the key and uh, maps size of the path uh, of the value, which is going to be what they have seen. So key V and uh, maps to list of new keys and I'm also going to filter that um, is that a function that exists I believe so yeah I don't know why I'm not sure is map uh, value and so all of those that have not been found are going to be here what I can do with this is uh, maps the next keys are going to be maps without um, and that's probably the map without and that's going to be the keys first so I'm going to use the keys and the key value of the found keys that's going to be the next map so I'm no longer searching for these uh, and I'm going to ignore them, which might be a problem for this, because I will still see these. Uh, is map, I think there's an is map key thing like a and this yep so I'm going to use that 
is map key door or key in the keys then I update it and otherwise that's because the key has been key was found already uh, so I will still need to expand the freaking thing but I'm no longer doing that little update here uh, that's too long All right. don't care it's going to bleed for that edge okay so oh that's the thing I was thinking like for all of these that are valid in here um, I'm able to pay that cost and I'm just not going to use it in all the clauses because that one is cheap anyway I don't care just going to make the inner loop a bit narrower and tighter technically this one should never happen but who cares uh, okay so where was I because I, I skipped around a bit now and I managed to lose myself in the code So I was searching the key. I found the next keys. Okay, well, that's where I'm at. Uh, for all the found keys. Let's find those are going to be the next keys. Then I will want to unlock all the doors. Uh, so for all the keys, I don't care for the value in the doors. Unlock. What was my function here? That was unlock the lowercase and the door. So the key and the doors are being unlocked. And this is going to be next doors. Uh, I will operate on found keys on the doors is my accumulator. Found keys is the one here. Okay, so uh, I don't really need the position, right? Did I? Where did I do that? Oh, the position was passed to this one. Right, so I will need the position. It's just like my new position will be different for each one of these I have. And this is where it's going to get kind of wild uh, I cannot unlock all the doors yet okay yeah this is the part that is funky so those are all possible keys I could have those are all the keys I have found that is fine but I haven't gathered all the keys I've only found the shortest path and now the thing I want to do is, uh, that's the thing, right? I want to search all the possibilities, starting with each of the possible keys that I have. That's going to be the kind of other search I do. Because I, I can start by A, I can start by B. So for all of the found keys, there is a possibility of me finding a different search for this again. So I am going to have to search from... Uh, the keys position which I still have in this map so maps get keys uh, it's going to be the key in the keys and that's going to return me the position of the key I want now uh, I will then search from the map which is unchanged my key here is going to be the maps without uh, there's probably faster to just do a maps remove or something here I have without what are how my maps function maps 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 and there's probably a remove there what is it delete remove remove
so I'm going to maps remove and I didn't check what was the argument term. It's always the key first. Key from keys and uh, I'm also going to unlock the doors that I had here. And that's the loop I do. And then I am going to do this for Yeah, I, I have a size for each of them. Um, here's, here's how it works. It's going to be lists max, the biggest one possible in all of the searches that I have. When I take the searches and I add the, uh, which is going to be the path length so far. Plus the path length for eel key and path length that I have in the found keys and this is going to be my list and the recursion and all the steps that should happen one after the other. I think that this might work. Scene is unused. That's true I no longer need the scene thing I don't actually need to return it so search key. Scene values I don't need because it's going to be a fresh for search every time. Okay New doors is unused. Yeah, because I'm not actually unlocking shit there. <laughs> uh, the new doors is no longer needed. I'm just going to return the freaking keys then. Uh, because I'm never modifying the doors. Is that right? The door scene. Yeah, I'm never modifying the doors. I just need them to know when I stop from somewhere. So here, here are all the keys I have throwing all my keys to you. So why is it not working now? Search key for is a new, well. Yeah, I needed to give the position because this is where I'm starting. That's still valid. Um, it's just that I'm returning a new position here. That's cool. What's broken next? Next function, Q isn't used, of course. Here we go. Now what do we get? That's going to be possibly one wild ride. Uh, no function, lists max of nothing. Why has it found nothing? Are there no valid keys anymore? Okay. That's probably my end case when I found everything, all the things I have no keys to find. Um, so I'm going to leave this here. That's going to be zero, that's my base case. I'm done searching. I've, or I've found all the keys, but uh, we'll see about that. Because that's what is going to give me nothing at all. That's the entire thing. And the rest is going to give me this. You know. Biggest list of Thing, search maps get keys so I'm going to explode it to make it a bit uh... hell no I'm not exploding anything okay each one of them and if Julie has this and then it's going to be the list max of that list of values that I have and that should do proper iteration Eight. Okay, that's an example of that word. Oh, is this? Yes, eight step total. Let's try this buddy here and see what we get. We're an hour ten in, and this is just part one. I hope part two is not a huge pain in the ass. So let's turn this input here. I'm 
join these. I'm not going to join these right away. I'm going to instead do it the old fashioned way of doing all of that. could have just get them kind of the way they were but anyway that's 114 and what they wanted me to get out of this one is I just want to answer no oh yeah okay easy 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 I want the smallest one <laughs> okay so let's try if I still get eight on this one because it's the only solution anyway Eight, that's good. Now, what I get for this one? Eighty-six. That sounds correct. Okay. Um, I'm going to try this buddy here, which should be on 136. So, input is equal to this truckload of things. Um, trying to save a few lines in here, so, oops. Uh, and here we and it seems to be fast so far so that's a kind of good sign I'm encouraged by that uh, because I thought that given the size of the map my search could have been extremely expensive and uh, my, I'm afraid it will do the same thing as day 16 where I think it's gonna be simple but it's oh yep yeah, it's starting to be very bad now uh, dear god this isn't gonna go well. Z infinite looping. Hmm. Crap. Because that one has plenty of options with plenty of keys that it can try at once and does. I'm having some kind of exponential combinatorial explosion I guess uh, but I'm going to trace if I'm not in a kind of a infinite loop so I'm going to search only with uh, what's the function I have I have well yeah I'll go with search which should be a uh, broader loops that are less likely to implode okay so I'm clearly looping very often with this um, One seven five two three. Yeah. Uh. So here's the thing, though, uh, where I can reduce my coverage. Uh, if I need to cross a key to find another key, uh, then I cannot realistically grab both keys at once, right? So if what I find is a key, I don't do this, I do this. I finish my search to find that key. There are no other path that I can get from where I am that's going to implode, that's going to increase them. Um, is it the new queue? Because what, what I, I had next queue, right? And the next queue was this. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go with the new queue. And the new queue is, uh, okay, so I'm going to rename new queue to something more descriptive. This is going to be, uh, okay, I'm going to rename next queue to, uh, Uh, 
yeah, there's next. I'm just rename new queue to next. Uh, new queue to It's just going to be the old queue in that case, because it's not technically new. It's a new variable, but it's the old content. What did I break now? Oh, I forgot a line. There we go. Okay. Maybe that one will be able to be a bit faster. Not really. That's not good. Uh, is it going to be one of these freaking days? Like maybe the map, uh, how to say that? Maybe that there, there, my map is not going to be as combinationally worse as this one, but I can't know that for sure. So 86, that one was right. Yeah, I do have a big explosion when they're are multiple possible inputs and I need to figure that one out now. But the example is not good. I need to, uh, where's my tracer? Boom. Uh, I had a thing with maps. Uh, recon map. And is there a thing where, yeah, there's always going to be at least a, an A door or something in one of these, and I don't want to have that. I'm going to filter a few of them at least. I'm going to trace them and run the example. But yeah, it's breaking the output 15, 3, 7. 15.1, I'm going to have to uh, do it with the debug output, otherwise it's going to be too hard. So in the search function, I can go here, see if I get in some kind of loop where I keep finding the same keys all the freaking time from the position I'm at. Um, so uh, I have this, I have the key, so linked of found keys, and I'm going to only return here the uh, keys in there because I don't care for the other output and see what that gets me. Why are you complaining now? Ah, uh, yeah. Nested list. Nope, that's good. Compile. Boom. JKM and OP. Okay, I know. Yeah, just trying them. There are so many of them visible at the same time. Because when I'm done with it, J, K, L, M, L. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, and that search that I'm doing here, kind of recursively. Uh, they're all going to start from the same position. The pathfinding I do could potentially be reused, but uh, let's uh, see for shits and giggles if I can get something that works well with my part one. Maybe it's going to be sufficient and the optimization is not uh, that critical. That's the 18, yes. Um, and um, 
day 18 p1 oh I left the input in there p1 there's not a lot of candidates at least it seems to be looping for a long while all right I'm going to kill it uh, remove the drop the IO oops So uh, just a search is probably not going to be sufficient. Oh, I think I got an idea. I don't know how. Yeah, OK, I think there's a interesting way to do it. I'm out of time. I might have to finish this tomorrow morning and still stay late. Um, so I have all of this, but the plan I will need to explore whenever I have time is uh, build a list of the distance from a key to all the other keys while ignoring the doors. And so I don't know if I can ignore the doors or not. Uh, Oh, well, noting the doors because I want to know which doors are in there. Uh, but the thing that is costly for me probably right now is to redo that search all the time. And uh, when I'm getting, for example, these lists, like I'm going to come from a given position and likely count my value to Y multiple times from any key whatsoever that I have. Uh, because all my movement is always, aside from the first one, to uh, all the other keys. And uh, I'm essentially doing a traveling salesman problem, I think. Uh, this might be a traveling salesman. Oh, I don't know if it's uh, exactly that, but Dijkstra's logarithm sounds like it would be fine, because the kind of thing that I have is that you know, the distance from I to E is always going to be the same, uh, no matter how my doors are done. The moment G is unlocked, those can be done. I can possibly just cache them all. Actually, let's try this approach. I'm going to use a very, very messy cache. And so I'm going to look here with my fancy process dictionary and where I'm at a given position and I am looking for a door or key here is uh, no that 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 might not work because I don't know how to look them up anyway um, that easily And I will need to swap them. Uh, because the thing is that this path may be the shortest, but right now I'm only finding them as long as the doors are closed. Well, I don't have a choice to do that, though. The thing is I'm looking for a specific door, and I'm flooding the map each time. Flooding the map shouldn't be that costly. So I don't think the problem is the is the map flooding. The problem is how many candidates I have each time. And each time I get into a candidate to find the point, then I'm going for an expensive search. So if I need to cache them uh, here, this is possibly the place where I could do it. Um, let's say that for all the keys that I have found, I'm going to cash on keys from that given position I have found all the following found keys and I can even return you the map size of that thing in there and this is going to be a cache function here but I don't know which key I'm looking for that's the problem mm. Because the thing I could do is that if here in that one, 
I knew what key I'm looking for. It's more what key I'm looking from in this case. And I could get all of them unless the unlock doors create new avenues. Yeah, okay. I'll need some thinking because I could do a cache. The problem is how do I invalidate this cache every time I unlock a door or something? Uh, do I still have my little IO format? Yes, it's not an infinite loop. It's indeed searching all the things. I'm going to have to think about it a bit. All right, little date. I found something interesting where uh, I use this function Erlang p hash two. Uh, that's the hashing function that Etz uses internally to make things. And uh, what I did is that I went into the search function and I decided to make a hash of the position, the the keys themselves, the new keys and the doors, and uh, run the output. Essentially, what I did is I took all my uh, mutable inputs. I took all the outputs that I would find and they are now they are now to come up multiple times again because I get the same digit multiple times over uh, although not always in the same order so here that one is there as well and there is some heavy repetition which means that um, I can probably each time I get this result I know about uh, avoid doing the search for the key itself and so that will drastically speed up uh, the subsequent search I could be doing at the same time so I won't need to do the f map flooding every single time the thing I don't know is that I don't think I can uh, you know cache this part here but uh, I can really really speed up the thing here so in search key is where I really need to do that to optimize it. And what I can do is case get of, as I said, the position, the keys, and the doors. And considering the map is unchanging usually, but yeah, um, I will need to flush the cache between runs because they could be shared on the same map and I could pollute my output. So I'm going to put the map in there. That's going to be a huge freaking key, but shared terms should be fine. If it's undefined, then uh, run the actual search. I'm going to store the result of the search in here. And so I will put the position, the map, the keys, and the doors into the thing and store the result. Otherwise, if I have a result that is found, return the result. And that will give me some, at least, interesting caching. I, I'm hoping it's going to be sufficient but I don't have high hopes. Um, there are not significant hopes. Well, yeah, bad map undefined, maps to list. Oh, yeah, that returns the old value. Here we go. At least for part one, it's not significantly faster for that one. Uh, let's see for the examples. Neither is it much more effective. All uh, right, so that's a bit sad. Um, I expected something at least uh, better than that, but it's going to be back to drawing board. This probably points to the algorithm itself being wrong, which means starting from scratch. And after an hour and a half working on this freaking thing, I'm not happy about it, and I know part two is going to be a huge pile of crap to deal with at the same time. Uh, good thing is apparently... Uh, I haven't looked at uh, the results and what people have, but counting the number of replies that I see in the threads about these things when I went to post about the previous day, uh, there are a few people who got solutions for that one rapidly. So it seems that it's universally taking long for that one. But drawing boards, I'll, I'll revert that little cache step. It's not useful. It's probably eating up a lot of memory as well. Um, and yeah, narrowing down that search repetition on this loop here is probably going to be what is most effective. Okay, so um, I've done a little bit of experimenting and I found something that is significant. Uh, one thing that I did is I replaced my uh, 
in my path scene value that I had accumulated. I no longer really need the entire thing. So uh, what I do with the path scene value when we get into the, uh, where's the thing? In the neighbor handling, I just use a counter of the steps that I've been seeing. There is no reason for me to accumulate a map of these since I have the more global map with everything. And so um, I've adjusted it to fit. And one thing I've done that uh, turned out to be really, really interesting is that here I started handling things where I kept a lineage of all the um, keys I was seeing and searching in terms of a path. So I gave myself that little lineage thing just as a debugging step where the thing I would do is like add this to the H like that. And I would just at every entrance of the loop, I will format this and the H. And then when I ran that uh, simply on the example, the thing I saw is like this big ass list with all the things. And it turns out, or what I suspected and turned out to be right, is that a lot of these lists uh, are looking for, you know, the same exact set of keys in them. They're just in a different order. And the whole prefix is roughly the same. And so for these, what I thought is um, there's a possibility there that my idea of a cache actually works. So to test that, uh, the thing I did was that I would just put the A uh, in a tuple, the H, the position, the map. Uh, that one I used a map size as a proxy. And the keys in there. And I put the found keys value in it. And this was the... Uh, this was just a thing that, uh, that, that, that I did when I put the result. And here I did k's get of the same key. Oh, no, wait. The lineage is not something I need at all. Not anymore. Okay. So the thing I did was, yeah, k's get of. Like, am I looking for the same exact map I have seen before? And not just the search key here with the breadth, search for, uh, the, 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 the breadth first search but the actual recursive search of all the possible things in between. So I went with a composite key of uh, map size, map, keys, and doors. And uh, that tells me like I'm calling exactly the function I have seen before. And so this is going to be OK. I've never seen it. If I've seen it, I'll format just an X just to let me see how often I get into that combinatorial explosion. And then the thing I did was that I just uh, here put this and the thing I put in there was found keys. And when I run that, uh, when I run that, there's a crap load of X's on this. And so the idea is not just to cache the search key as I did before, it's to cache the whole damn search at once. And so uh, the way I'm going to set it up, uh, because I'm guessing or I'm hoping that this will be a huge improvement, is that uh, the search function that I have in here is instead going to go to uh, a cached search. And the cached search is going to take exactly the same argument as a regular search. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is wrap it in the kind of key I had before, which was the position, the map size of the map, the keys, and the doors. And exactly the uh, process dictionary thing that I was mentioning a bit earlier, where uh, if the key exists, uh, if it doesn't exist, then I'm going to cache it. So the result is going to be the search of pose, map, keys, and doors. Uh, I'm going to put the key and R in the map, and I'm going to return this. And if the result exists, then I just return the freaking result. And uh, this function remains the same, but I'm going to call uh, cached search because for each of them, if I can save the cost of doing the expensive operation, I'm going to save it. And now we see what we let, let me double check it first because 
that one does not care for the result. The thing is there is the list min, and that's the thing I'm storing. I'm storing the actual minimal result that I have with the path length uh, as it was identified in the thing. So, yeah. And was that the right result? 136 steps. That seems to work pretty well. Okay, let's try the last big ass example. The bigger ass example. The asser example. Where's my, okay, little cursor. Uh, and here we will get the input is equal to this charming thing. Where I'm going to. Like this. And this is going to be my new input because I want to go fast. Example 81. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm going to flush that one out because that one is actually not the tricky as that one is. Cache search on P1 should work. Uh, advent race 18. It's not as fast as I hoped it would be. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Uh, is it right? Uh, I hoped it would be faster with this because it worked with all the small examples, but not that one. Oh, okay. We, we got a result in 22 seconds. It's not ideal, but we can make do with this. Uh, actually. I think it's dictionary is the option for that one. Yeah, it's probably huge. Let's flush the process dictionary. I'm going to run it again. See, oh, oh yeah, the result is cached. Of course, now it's fast. <laughs> I ran the entire thing properly. All right. Uh, hopefully that's the right answer. Four, six, thirty-five. We got part one. Okay. Let's hope part two is not a Calvary. Uh, you find you are in the middle. Update your map to instead use the correct date. Okay. Oh. What? Four entrances? What am I going to do with this garbage? Okay. Uh, I'm going to save a copy in priv. Day 18 P2. And they want me to do what? Okay. Across with four A's. Cross, 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 and that's giving me four distinct freaking areas because there is a solid wall in between it seems. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a big solid wall right in the middle. Okay. Uh. It's going to be P2. Oh no, even the parsing function is no longer going to be right. Damn it. Uh, I'm not happy about that. Okay, this channel was in four separate sections, each with its sound entrance. Okay. Because there's the keys, the doors out of vaults, it would take too long to collect all the keys by yourself. Instead, you deploy four remote controlled robots. Each starts at one of the entrances at. Your goal is still to collect all of the keys in the fewest steps, but now each robot has its own position and can move independently. Okay. You can only remotely control a single robot at a time. Collecting key instantly unlocks the corresponding doors regardless of the vault, the key. Okay, so I don't need to change anything about that part. Uh, then the bottom right column, oh no. Okay, so I have this where there is a robot. I have this where there is a robot. That one should find nothing. That one should find nothing. That one should find nothing. That one should find B. Then on the next round, that one, okay. I think I can adapt the code I have to mostly work with this. Um, 
I'm going to... Is there a function? Let me see first. I want to know if... Uh, here I had my big ass process dictionary. I think if I call delete... Nope. Uh, that's the way to delete the process dictionary. Because I don't want to keep this forever for all the things. Um, that's in the Erlang module and it's not in here. So I'm going to... Module. I'm going to clean this up because now I'm going to have the same map size with the same attributes in there. Um, but it's going to work differently with multiple positions. So data type. Nope. 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 I'm going to. Ah, come on. There's a process dictionary function. Let me find that. It's. I'm going to work around it instead. Uh, I'm going to work around it in a very, very simple way, which is going to use a goddamn process to do everything. So, uh, yeah, why not just, oops. Parent is self. Uh, let's link it. It's going to make it easier to debug a few things, maybe. And receive x, return x. That's the thing. Now I'm going to do that with all of them here it's literally the same code boom boom here and here okay uh, and now I should at least see that if I call the compile compiling again and I raise the thing again, I will at least have longer time because it's got to repopulate its process dictionary. Um, so I'm going to have to carry multiple positions. And so the position is no longer going to be undefined. It's going to be this. Uh, I'm going to have each position. Where is the position I update? It's where I find the at sign here. So here it's going to be this on top of the position. I'm just going to have multiple positions that I'm carrying around. And the thing I'm going to do here is, um, you know, take that. How did it take zero seconds to run the second one? It's uh, probably crashing. Great. Um, or exiting normally. Anyway, uh, so now I've got multiple positions in my case search. Uh, I'm going to keep the cache exactly the same. I don't care. The search, the search function is the one that's going to need to be different. And I'm going to make a search keys function that's going to be all of these position. All of these positions, I mean. And um, search keys is going to have to run for position map and doors. And my guess is that the thing I can do with these is, oh, which of the cursors am I going to update to fit the key that was in there? Uh, all right, I'll figure it out. Um, because they'll all be in a quarter of the map, and I need to move only the good cursor in there. Uh, but that's something for later. So for each of these, a the thing I can do is probably uh, this append. In fact, now I'm doing. I'm going to do it per. Yeah, per position is going to be maybe a bit simpler to do. Considering I can only control one thing at a time. 
where p is each one of the positions I have. Some of them are going to be empty, and some of them are not. So here, it's no longer going to be found keys that way. That will need to change. Um, new keys, it's no longer going to be that. Uh, I'm going to couple them each with the position they initially had. Um, and here is going to be new keys, that's going to remain the same. Here I'm going to have to add a little step, which is going to be um, that was new. New pos keys per position. Is going to be for this that gives me all the keys I have. Uh, but I'm also going to carry the initial position for each of them. And the thing I hope to be able to do, and here I'm going to start imploding that stuff. here uh, plus the path, the length and whatnot. Uh, the thing I'm going to do is that here it's going to also be the the original position for that one was there. And so here uh, instead of doing that I will need to get the positions I have and swap position for O pause and key in the list of positions I had. And that means that I'm driving this one robot forwards and not the other one. So swapping a position will mean that when I get the position P with the key P in the list here where it's the same position, instead I am going to return KT. So it's the new position. And all the other case where it doesn't match, uh, I'm leaving them as they are. And I'm assuming that the position is always going to be found because otherwise there's a big problem in there. P, K, T. Yep, I think that should work. Uh, yeah, let's call it P then and realign all the things. What is it complaining about now here? Pause isn't bound, yes, because I had removed it here. Now it's no longer there. So let's see if I recompile that one and I rerun the same example I had. Uh, example, now which returns tree, which is clearly wrong. Clearly, clearly, clearly wrong. So I broke something in there. Because I'm cached searching for all of these for the key that I changed where I removed the map and that should in theory be correct. Uh, what did I break? Mm. Is it that my... I don't think it's the cache. I can try uh, avoiding trying the whole cache altogether and bypassing the cache, and then I will know if this at least is something that does not tolerate the change I made. Oh, wait, I think I, I've updated the thing here. So cache search does take a list of keys as well. Search keys is still there. For each of them, I do get the result, but, and found keys here should have been flattened. Uh, I'm just going to output my uh, found keys to make sure it has the format I thought it would have. Okay. So the first time around, it kind of works. This is always the same original position I had in there. 
Uh, did I mess up with the swap of the keys? No, the swap position should be all right. Oh. 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 Yeah, okay, I get it. Wait a second, I need to go look into my history. That was the function I wanted. Whoopsie. I want to swap the position of that one with the value of that key and not the key itself. Otherwise, everything is going to blow up in the other one. And Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, so I fixed it to tolerate multiple robots at the same time. Now, um, that's pretty cool if it just works that way with nothing else. 136. Um, and so, day 18... P1 should still work. We'll take about 20 seconds. That will let me 5406 for that one. Uh, during that time, I'm just going to prepare uh, that. I'll start with a simple one to make sure that it's correct. And I just update the examples during that time. So, new examples. Big parallel stuff. Uh, I'm kind of happy that it appears it was this easy to get the parallel shit going because it's the kind of stuff that could really, really break the kind of algorithm, but doesn't seem like it was that bad. Uh, all right, I'm going to actually pick this one here. Here we go. Five four oh six. I think that was the right value, so I do support multiple robots. But we'll see if the things. Nine thirty one. Oh yeah, that will never match because I did not comment out this one instead. Three compile and then run the example, and I get six. And the answer was supposed to be eight. God damn. It. Oh, uh, I might have to sum my keys up differently. So it's working for one. I get all the values. The case search gives me a list, but the list of case search is no longer the same format it had. Um, yes, it's the same form. Search keys is different. That one still returns me the path length in a single cache search by doing all of these. God. Okay. Um, sure. So I'm going to go look into. Let's get rid of the cache for that one again, just in case. Boom, in here, 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 no cache. No! God damn it. I closed the thing by accident, which means I lost my history in the file. Fortunately, I wasn't too far in, and I left the stuff commented. No, that's still a 6. Okay, so the cache has no effect on this. The integer still, I still get the path for that one. I guess I need to... I should have the path of the one I pick. The V value I have is the one is there. The path length is chosen. Oh, do I need to? I shouldn't have to add the path length of all the things. Did I start this one on the wrong step, though? Um, the map above, yeah, okay. I think I started maybe on the thing in the middle. Yeah, okay. I'm going to, uh, oops, that's not the right thing. I'm going to use the, yeah, uh, I didn't start from the right map. Big whoop. Um, I'm not going to copy paste the whole thing. I think the only difference here is at CD is fine. At here it's going to be at AB, at CB, and A, and at here. I think that's the one they're starting from. 
And there we go. Okay. That is less scary. Uh, here's a more complex one. Let's start with a more complex one. Well, rather continue because we've already started. So I'm going to delete that input. I don't care for well, I've always a simple one. So if I end up having to modify something, it's nice to have it around. Nope. I'm going to format that one here first. Boom. And here we go. Input is equal to this. And here I'm just going to realign all of these like that. Now I'm just going to see how it runs. 32, that went well. And the response, the answer is 32. More choices. Let's get funky with this one and hope we get the right result. But so far, I I'm starting to feel confident now about this. And hopefully I have the time to finish running all the things uh, within the two hours for this video. So I, I, I stay within reasonable amount of times for all the stuff I do. Also, all the time you viewer might be spending looking at me fumble around for a long, ah, God damn, for a long period of time. So that's more like it. Um, input is this. Take the time to align stuff. Come on. Example 72, and the answer is 72. Okay, let's do it with part two, which should be working. I'm expecting it to be longer. That's fine. Uh, it took 22 seconds due to the first one the first time around. Uh, but frankly, the examples seem good. Um, yeah, uh, rather than making you wait for nothing, I'll pause it and then pause it. And it, it oh! Didn't have the time, 1938. Let's see what we get on that one. Please work, please work. And that worked, all oh, right. We're back on time for the calendar schedule. Um, so we can see you again next time for day 19, uh, where hopefully it doesn't take a full two hour again this time. Uh, but I will take the victories when I can because I did not need to cheat to finish this one like I did on day 16, what I'm, I'm still sour about, to be honest. Um, all right, we're almost, we're almost done now, I think. Uh, yeah, not that many days left, so hopefully you've enjoyed this.